Right. So on this demo, I want to show a couple of things. First is uh, this update from CoreOS Container Linux to Flatfire Container Linux that Andy was mentioning before. And I'll also take, a, take the opportunity to showcase the Kimpok update server. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in into an instance that I've prepared before of the Kimpok update server. So this is what uh, a company that has the managed service will see. So let's go to webinar demo. And the, the first thing that appears here is the GitHub authentication. So we use auth to authenticate into the instance. So you need to be added to a group to, to be able to log in. Uh, thankfully, I'm added to this particular group. So I'm going to sign in. And yeah, I'm going to verify myself because security is pretty important to us. Uh, just a second. There we go. And I'm going to authorize the application uh, yeah, to uh, authenticate. Yeah, and that's it. So I'm logged in into the Kimpo Update server service. So you see here one application, which is Flutter Container Linux. Uh, you could have several other applications that use Yamaha protocol, but let's focus on Flutter Container Linux here. And here on the right, you can see some activity panel uh, where you see all the uh, relevant events that happened in the past. Uh, you see that the, some uh, instance got updated and some instances had some errors. So here you can have an overview of what's happening. Uh, but let's get in. And inside the application itself, we have these groups that Annie was mentioning before. Uh, we have a production alpha groups uh, group, which is yeah, uh, just to, to showcase how you would like to run some alpha instances in production. And we have a production stable group, which is where all your instances will, should be running. And you see here that uh, we have two instances. So here uh, on the right side of the screen, you see three machines and the uh, two on the top are already uh, running Flatfire Linux, Flatfire Container Linux. Uh, and they are members of this group, D372, which is the production stable group. And there's one instance on the, at the bottom that's running CoreOS Container Linux. And yeah, the server doesn't know about it. So as Annie was mentioning in these groups, you can configure several things and things like uh, yeah, what channel the group should be following. If you want to update only in office hours and how many updates you want to do every minute. Uh, so this allows you to you know, finally grain uh, control uh, how you, the updates should be uh, deploying to your clusters. So let's get in the, one of these groups, the production stable, the one that has instances. Um, here you see, uh, yeah, several graphics. So first you can see the overall update progress of the group. So in this case, uh, the, the two instances that are running uh, just completed the update. So uh, yeah, nothing, nothing fancy here, but you, you could see how the update is downloading or what percentage of uh, instances are downloading updates, what percentage of instances have installed updates uh, and yeah, things like that. And then we have some charts uh, here, so you can see in the last uh, 24 hours or so uh, what's the breakdown of versions uh, in this group. Uh, in this case, they're all running uh, stable, 224760, as seen here. But if you have several versions running in your cluster, you could see the breakdown. Then we have another graphic to, that shows the status in the, in the past 24 hours or so. Uh, and this is the operations that happened uh, in, in this time. So if we click here, we can see that uh, yeah, at this point in time, between uh, 6 and 10 p.m. Uh, yesterday, uh, some updates were granted, some of these were downloading, uh, used to some errors. So this gives you a, a nice visualization of what happened in the, in the recent past in your cluster. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this instance uh, at the bottom uh, that's still running Chorus Container Linux, and I'm going to update it to Flatfire by assigning it to this uh, group here. Uh, yeah, so I have a script that uh, I've written. It's uh, doing some things. Uh, first of all, uh, you see that it takes as a para parameter uh, the, uh, the group ID. And yeah, this is so you can put this group here, and, and the instance will join the group. Um, then it uh, downloads the official public key for the updates uh, on Flutter Container Linux, 
and mount it in the right place. And as Annie said, this is just so the instance can trust that the update is, uh, is good and it's trusted. Uh, then uh, we're setting the group uh, to this group ID that you, that, that you pass as a parameter. And then this is uh, the important part. Uh, we point the update, ser the, the update service to the server that's running uh, the Kinfolk update service. So this URL here and with the one slash update. And then we set the instance version to 0 .0 0 0.0.0. And this is so we force an update. So uh, otherwise it will all, only update to the two versions that are newer than the one that's running. And in this case, it's gonna be the same because uh, we're, we, we release, uh, well, we have the same version as, as upstream container limits. For container limits. So let's just run it with this group ID and that's it. So it's all set. Now the next step is uh, that we're gonna force an update. We could wait uh, for 45 minutes or so so the machine does it automatically, but yeah, in the interest of time, let's just force it. And there we go. So this will query the server uh, the server replies, hey, there's, a, there's an update available here and it's this version. So uh, in a minute, it will start downloading this update. And yeah, after that, it will apply it. And yeah, when you reboot, you will have a, a Flatware container Linux running. So while this is downloading, uh, let's do something else too. Um, so let's move one of the instances that were in the production stable group to alpha. Uh, so let's pick this for example and to do this you just have to change this file here and instead of using this group ID let's use this group ID the alpha one and then you just force an update or wait until the instance updates itself and yeah it should uh, uh, get the alpha version from the server. Uh, as you can see here, there's an update available. It's 231701, uh, uh, as you can see here in the alpha channel. And it will proceed to download it. Uh, in the meantime, you can see here that uh, the graph changed a bit, the graphics. So now there's 50% instance complete, 50% downloading. And uh, yeah. You can also see the instances that are assigned there. And yeah, you can see that uh, a timeline, which is also neat to, to see when things happened in a particular instance. Let's go back to alpha. Uh, yeah, in the alpha uh, group, uh, the update is downloading. And yeah, this will take some time, but eventually you'll end up with uh, Two instances are running stable and one instance that is, that is running alpha and yeah let's wait some seconds and so you, I can show you uh, the, the login screen with the platform container Linux message okay so this is this one finalized so let's reboot and after we're logging you should see uh, yeah flat card there um, let's try to log in now. Since it's not booted yet, but we can try again. And there you go. Flat uh, Linux, like team fault. This is the group, the stable group. And this is the version that's running. In the meantime, the alpha instance uh, finished downloading. So this got updated. And now same thing, I can reboot and wait a bit. So we can see now that the update was downloaded. And since the, the instance didn't query the server uh, after it, it's been updated, the server doesn't know that it's uh, already updated. So let's force another update here. Uh, and the server will reply, hey, there's no update, but this is the way that the server knows that the, the machine was updated successfully. So if we refresh here, all are complete. Now we can log in into the instance we moved to the alpha group. 
and it's there again flat car uh, but this time it's running 231701 uh, as the alpha channel shows and again we can uh, force an update so the server knows that the machine is is good and then the update was successful and refreshing shows it as complete and you can see here how it was running uh, yeah this represents actually version zero and now it's running 2317.01 so yeah great um, that's pretty much it for my side